the last week or so has just been absolutely exhausting as a Jew online. Like, I'm ready to go back to people forgetting that we exist again. <laughs> Let's be real. Um, and as if we didn't have enough to deal with, it's just kept going. Like, we thought, okay, we'll make a video last week. But um, the news just kept coming. So this is as far as I was willing to wait. It, this is going to be a negative vibrations video. Like, I'm sorry. This is going to be... Th there are no positive vibes to be found here. <laughs> Strap in. <laughs> So Kanye West, now known legally as Ye, but nobody calls him that, so we're sticking with Kanye, um, needs no introduction. He's a multimillionaire musical artist who has managed to maintain relevance, not really for innovation, but more for making inflammatory statements and insulting people. At this point, he is not recognized for his artistic talent anymore. It's more just being a dick in public. A lot of said infamy can be traced back to Kanye's struggles with mental health, to which a lot of people attribute his erratic behavior. Um, but let's be clear. This does not excuse his behavior. Clearly Kanye is mentally ill and needs support, and hopefully he's able to get the help that he needs. But that does not excuse bigotry. Nothing excuses targeting a marginalized group. Full stop. This video is intended to be a summary and an explanation of the situation for anyone who might not be fully informed. Unfortunately, anti-Semitism is a prejudice that isn't fully understood by most lay people, and so we hope to clarify why what Kanye's been saying is dangerous. Claim number one, Kanye has said that Jews hold power over the media, Jewish people are medicating him, and a Jewish doctor diagnosed him. We're putting all these together because it's basically ideas about Jews being in power over Kanye and other people. This is a long-standing conspiracy theory that holds that Jews have secret power over all kinds of industries in particular the media and banking. Where have I heard that before? Going into the history and the origins of this idea would require a whole other video, and honestly, at times, a master's degree to really explain sufficiently. The very short version is that Jews were often forced into jobs that were seen in the past as unseemly, like being bankers in a time when Christian law forbid the practice of usury or charging interest the only way that you make money as a banker. This was perfect in a time of Christian hegemony because it gave the population another reason to hate and scapegoat Jews. And while it may seem as though a disproportionate amount of power players in Hollywood are Jewish or of Jewish heritage, they're not allowed to be or play characters who are too Jewish. It is their proximity to whiteness, not their Jewishness, that allows them to achieve success in the media. Jews found success in American pop culture due to the exit of many Jewish entertainment professionals from Europe in the years leading up to World War II. This is a very truncated summary that doesn't get into the history of Jews' entertainment, which is very interesting. But to say Jews run Hollywood and the banks ignores the Christian hegemony that made them some of the few accessible methods of earning a living. And the forced assimilation that was a huge thing in the entertainment industry. But we're keeping it simple. There are about 4.8 million Jews in the world. That's about 0.2% of the world's population. Less than a quarter of a percent of the world is Jewish. Kanye West has 31.7 million followers on Twitter.com. Yes, there are a number of powerful Jews in the world, but when compared to the number of powerful Christians, that number is statistically insignificant. And when anyone says there are Jews in positions of power controlling people, that tends to rub more normie Jews like me the wrong way. <laughs> But many people believe the conspiracy theories and claims that Jews are secretly running the world and are to blame for any number of world events. And these claims have resulted in a lot of dead Jews. People have been killed over this conspiracy theory. If you're unaware, let me be the first to inform you of the Jewish puppet master theory, which is a cornerstone of white supremacy. It's the idea that people of color are all being used by smart, wily Jews to achieve our secret goals. These are white supremacist beliefs that have leaked into communities of color, in particular the black community, as a way to sow division between black people and Jews who have worked together to fight white supremacy successfully in the past. Claim two, black people are the real Jews, the 12 tribes, the 12 lost tribes of Judah, the blood of Christ, who people known as the, as the race black really are. That was a direct quote. I'm sorry about the grammar. This is just factually untrue. There are black Jews, which people seem to forget a lot in this dialogue, but not all black people are Jewish and not all of them originate in the 12 tribes of Israel. There are legends of a few of the 12 tribes of Israel lost in parts of Asia and India, and there are groups like the Kaifang Jews, a small community of Jews native to China, who for several centuries managed to retain their Jewish identity in some form despite being cut off from the wider Jewish community, but were mainly assimilated into the Han Chinese community. However, they are a vanishingly small community that numbers between 600 and 1,000 people. There is also a conspiracy theory that the majority of Jews today are descendants of European converts to Judaism and therefore not actual Jews. 
While most Jews probably have converts in their ancestry, this claim is pretty much baseless. This is also an unnecessary slight against converts to Judaism who are just as Jewish as everyone else and deserving of respect. Conversion is notoriously difficult in Judaism, and also I doubt that many people were converting to Judaism in a Christian-controlled Europe. The idea that the Jews have taken an identity that rightfully belongs to all black people is just false. This is a myth that is in the modern day perpetuated by the Black Hebrew Israelites, a movement that many considered to be anti-Semitic, just not in practice, but by definition. They are not Jewish. Their church was founded in 1896, and there are now dozens of BHI organizations. Their practices usually combine Christianity and Judaism in some way, similar to Messianic Jews. Messianic Jews, by the way, also Christians, but we've discussed this. Some of them may introduce other syncretic practices as well, but they all seem to believe in Jesus, which is proof that they aren't following Judaism. As we say, we exclude the idea of Jesus as the Messiah. I'll say it until the cows come home, but no sect of Judaism has ever accepted Jesus as the Messiah. Not one, never, never, ever, never, ever, 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 ever. Many BHI believers and practitioners do hold anti-Semitic beliefs and are prejudiced against actual Jews. It's falling back on the Jews are tricksters trying to keep you down idea, as well as giving in to white supremacist beliefs. The existence of BHI creates a really huge problem within the Jewish community, which is a suspicion towards black Jews, who should be welcome and comfortable in all our spaces, but are often asked to present their Jewish bona fides or mistreated in other inappropriate ways. This is a racist thing to do. Asking a black Jewish person to prove themselves in a way you wouldn't ask someone who looks like me to do is racist and unacceptable. And like acting as though Jews can only look one way, is anti-Semitic. But BHI increasingly puts these Jews in danger and in uncomfortable situations by existing. Jews need to work on this within our own community, but BHI is making it much worse. Claim number three. Planned Parenthood was created to control the Jew population, meaning black people. Kanye calls Planned Parenthood his Holocaust Museum. West then appeared to downplay the atrocities of the Holocaust by noting that while 6 million Jews were slaughtered by the Nazis, over 20 million have died by the hands of abortion. Claiming the phrase, my body, my choice, is a promotion for Planned Parenthood. This is from Billboard. This one is deeply complicated. First of all, he's minimizing the Holocaust, which is a form of Holocaust denial. A lot of anti-choice people compare the Holocaust to abortion, which is disrespectful to the millions who were murdered in the Shoah. When you compare the Holocaust to anything, Aside from perhaps another genocide, you're basically taking part in a white supremacist talking point. Fetuses are not people. They are not being targeted en masse, and since fetuses are not people, abortion providers are not murdering children. This is something that we should note, because the anti-Semitic idea of blood libel, in which Jews use the blood of the innocent in rituals, particularly for baking bread, is another anti-Semitic talking point, and completely false. Kanye also brings up George Soros, a classic anti-Semitic dog whistle, as Soros happens to be a wealthy Jewish businessman, it's doubtful that his name would become synonymous with secretly controlling the world if he was a Gentile. No one thinks that Jeff Bezos is paying protesters, but Soros is obviously sending a check to every leftist or liberal organizer on the planet. Now I think for a lot of people, the last straw on this was Kanye's tweet calling for DEFCON 3 action against Jews, um, which is a form of violence. Like, calling for violence against Jews? Not great. No, nobody liked that. <laughs> well, some people like that, but we don't like them. Kanye has also indulged in some worrying comments about who he thinks is controlling his actions. Quote, I lost my reputation and I'm up here just like I want my family, but I don't want my family to have to say what the left wants it to say, to have to say what China wants it to say. I want to be an American and protect my kids and protect my wife and raise my kids as Christians and have my wife be a Christian. From Billboard. Here, Kanye is claiming the left canceled him, but he didn't lose his reputation. He threw it away. He just, he says that he just wants his family as though someone has taken them from him and he's entitled to them. This is a conservative talking point. The left wants to tear apart families with their woke politics. The implication is that Kanye is not allowed to be a religious and that because of being publicly conservative and Christian, he has had his family taken away from him. I can't speak to the West family's domestic affairs, but this stinks of BS. First of all, the Kardashians are Christians. They might not measure up to the specific charismatic evangelical Christianity that Kanye subscribes to, but they are Christian. Secondly, it appears that Kanye has not protected his wife or children from anything, given that he has publicly threatened his wife's ex-boyfriend and disrespected the privacy of his wife regarding their divorce. While the Kardashians are not big on privacy, you would think if Kanye was concerned about that, he would think about how publicly threatening his wife's boyfriend would affect them and also bringing them out into the public and discussing how their mother reflects on them. 
Lastly, while the Kardashians are kind of hush-hush about it, they're Republicans. They come from generational wealth and are even pretty socially conservative. They've never tried to hide their conservatism either, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to say the left is policing Kanye's speech or his family when the Kardashian Jenners are doing just fine. They just have abstained from hate speech so far. I can't believe I had to put a Kardashian sidebar in this video. Clearly we are doing some very serious anti-racist work here. <laughs> I have a master's degree. <laughs> To quote the Anti-Defamation League, Ye's comments have been embraced by anti-Semitic extremist groups. During an October 16th sermon for the Nation of Islam's annual Holy Day of Atonement commemoration, student minister Ishmael Muhammad referenced Ye's recent remarks. Extremist black Hebrew Israelite sects also praised Ye over the weekend for helping spread their teachings to more people. Other extremist groups, including White Lives Matter and the Guayam Defense League, have leveraged Ye's comments to further their own agendas and inspire new propaganda campaigns, end quote. Comments from someone as famous and influential as Kanye West embolden people who believe the same lies. And they spread the message that these beliefs are acceptable. This is dangerous. In 2021, anti-Semitic hate crimes reached an all-time high in the United States. Quote, incidents reported in all 50 states, attacks against synagogues and JCCs, Jewish community centers, increased 61%. End quote. There's a really excellent article from the ADL that covers all statistics from that report. It's a super depressing read, but very important. We cannot become complacent about hate crimes. They will only increase as people become emboldened in their prejudices. I think a lot of people are asking, in good faith, why is it now that Jews are being targeted at changes happening? What about all the horrible things he said about black people? Now, Kanye has claimed that slavery was a choice. We shouldn't have to even explain why that is insulting and factually untrue. And that's not the only insulting and frankly horrifying thing that Kanye West, who was a black man, has said about black people. He has said, quote, 50% of black deaths a year is actually abortion. It's not the cop with the knee. It's not black on black violence and gang violence, not heart attacks. It's actually abortion. The most dangerous place for a black person in America is in their mother's stomach. Quote, it's not racism. That's too wide a term. It's genocide and population control that black people are in today in America that is promoted by the music and the media that black people make, the Jewish record labels get paid off of, end quote, from Billboard. A lot of people have condemned Kanye for saying these things. People were not totally silent about these statements at the time. But why is he now losing contracts? Why is this affecting his business? Well, it's not because Jews own the entertainment industry or are highly influential. It's not that he fuck with the wrong people. It's because a black man saying offensive things about black people, well, white people tend to stay out of that. It's not their business, they feel. But when Kanye, who is a Christian and not a Jew, says anti-Semitic stuff, that's going to be handled differently. I'm not excusing Kanye's statements in the past. He should have lost everything after making statements against black people. I would also argue that spreading misinformation is just different from calling for violence against Jews, which is what Kanye did. There are other factors at play, like timing. I think for a lot of people, Kanye going death con 3, as he put it, was the final straw. What really breaks my heart about this, because I was never a Kanye stan, is that this will endanger Jews most of all, and particularly Jews of color. Jewish people of color are already subject to extreme racism and suspicion within our communities, and the last thing they need is to be targeted by extremists outside our community or from fear within it. Jews are such a small fraction of the population, and as a minority group, we need to stand together and stand in solidarity with other minority groups. There is a long history of Jewish and black solidarity, and I am thankful to all the non-Jewish black people I have seen spreading information about anti-Semitism. You guys are my heroes. I think a lot of Jews are really afraid right now, and I cannot express how touching it is to see people of all races, creeds, and religions condemning anti-Semitism and committing to solidarity with Jews. We see you. We thank you. It really does make me feel as though we're moving toward a more just and peaceful world. If you want to read some really amazing and detailed reporting, we've cited all of our sources in the description, and I highly recommend the ADL article, which is updated with all the most recent information about Kanye's statements. Thank you for watching. I really hope this video does convey to people how serious this is, because obviously while racism is wrong always, when it becomes dangerous is when racism emboldens people to make decisions that will end or hurt other people's lives. Jews have often become endangered by the things people say and think about us, and it's never the end. Uh, there are some people who have said that we've become too complacent in America, and I think that's true. Because there are some Jews in positions of power in the government, we feel as though perhaps everything is going to be okay. Um, and I don't know that it will be if, if we don't make sure that it will be. We have to all stand up and say this is not acceptable and we all have to condemn people who say things like this. Like, Kanye is just the beginning. Look at who what your local representatives are saying about Jews. Look at what your local representatives are not saying about Jews. Sometimes the call is coming from inside the house. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you think this video could be helpful to someone, please share. 
I don't want to be hostile to anybody who might not understand. I want this video to be able to explain to people something that might be new to them. And I want people to understand that they don't have to know everything. Like, anti-Semitism is a prejudice that a lot of people are not as familiar with as they should be. Um, and they think it's very one-dimensional when in fact it has a thousand year of year long history and we need to educate people on it. So thank you so much again. Bye-bye.